Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> the an- the anti mosquito spray business, the empire. Yeah, the cool thing with mosquitoes. <laughs> Seriously. You need to do big mosquitoes. Follow the money. You know what you don't see as you know what you don't see as much as you used to when when I was a kid, like everybody had like the mosquito zapper things. You know the the you plug it in and you know you just sit there and just watch the mosquitoes. You know, just just have wh- the, the trails filled with deep. That yeah, I mean, the, the the how come we're not electrocuting bugs anymore? Like they still do it at like glass homes in the south. They have those. Yeah. Like everywhere. Huh? Bugs got smarter. These electric bu- like they figured yeah, out the racket racket racket. thing is bugs. Yeah, I've seen that where you can. Uh, those things hurt. I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand <laughs> what you the point of that. If you are use them on people. With the with the with the bug, shouldn't you be killing them in that moment? Why do you need the electric also? See, my wife had the my, my wife had this thing for spiders, where it's like a, I mean, you know those handheld vacuum cleaners. It was it was effectively one of those with like a dome on it. And it had like bristles on it that like grabbed yeah. it. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> it would suck it into an electrocution field. Okay, so you put the dome over the spider, you turned it on. I'm gonna drop. Man, that was a pretty decent uh, impression. I just did electric. So it would vacuum it up into electricity. Here, this is the thing that I was talking about. Basically, this like a grabber, not nearly okay. as cool as what you're talking about. That's not like the thing you get. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. We had this one spider when we lived in uh, Macomb, Illinois. We had just gotten some new patio furniture, and this thing must have shipped from whatever country. Uh, there, this, this, we had the exterminator come out. <laughs> he wanted to identify the animal. This thing had bone structure. Uh, <laughs> that, that is not native to you. I mean, this thing was probably eating squirrels. <laughs> I mean, this spider was like that big. Its center body was probably like that, but it had like the crazy long legs. So what? So you like opened it and then it was there and you like ran away and kept no, it no, 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 no. We we uh we put the new patio furniture out there, never saw it, and the very next day there was this like gigantic web like you'd see in the movies, uh, in our backyard, like by where the shed was. <laughs> this, this thing didn't even seem. This thing didn't seem like it should. There should have been real. That's. All right, let's talk about this exam. For starters, when is this exam? Friday. Friday. Oh, Friday the 13th at 1.10 p.m. All right. So final exam, Friday the 13th, 1.10 p.m. Uh, what's up? Oh, yeah, seriously. Um, the exam will be uh, t- 10 questions as usual. Uh, you'll have full two hours to take it. Um, it will be a majority programming. Um, some, of, some of the exam will have you reading code. Some of the exam will have you writing code. Um, I would say a lot of the stuff is going to, there's going to be at least several functions where you're going to have to write some C stuff. And you're writing it by hand, so, uh, you know, little errors and stuff like that aren't the end of the world. Um, but kind of showing that you know how to use some of the string functions where you're passing in pointers, you're manipulating something, and coming out is the, is the pointer. Uh, there might be things external to strings, just, just working with pointers. So we've done quite a bit with pointers and addresses and, um, and, and things like that. So uh, uh, being able to manipulate stuff, if I say write a, write a method that does this, write a method that does this, so maybe even treat um, – probably close to half of the exam is maybe almost like a C programming exam. Little to do with shared memory and, and, and stuff like that. Um, let's see. Uh, there will be some uh, shared memory, uh, semaphore type questions. I will allow you to have a one sheet of notes for the exam. So if you want to you know, print out some example code for creating shared memory. and, type, and type. Huh? Type. I'm fine with that. Yeah. I mean, so understand I'm going to ask questions assuming you have that in front of you. Um, so, you know, like, I don't, you know, I'm not necessarily saying you have to remember, memorize the exact two lines of code for creating and getting shared memory. 
Okay, but I might ha ask you to write something that assumes you're sharing some memory. Um, you know, I might say, you know, fork fork a child and have uh, you know do something between the, the the parent and the child related to shared memory. You can have your little cheat sheet that lets you uh, see the code that you would need to put in there for shared memory. Go ahead. Both sides. Fine. Yeah, I mean, is, keep in mind that the que I'm, I'm going to ask questions with the full knowledge that you have that sheet in front of you. Therefore, uh, the more I'm letting you write, the less it's probably going to benefit you, is, <laughs> is, is the punchline. Um, but yeah, so bring a sheet. Uh, effectively, what I'm saying is you don't have to memorize the, uh, you know, some get and shared memory stuff and, and all that stuff. So that's what you would say needs to be on that sheet. It's setting up, like... Shared memory, the process, all that stuff. I would say, yeah. I would say the things that you definitely want to have on that sheet, and you can put anything you want on there, but the things you definitely want to have on the sheet is just the stupid little syntax stuff. Um, and keep in mind, I'm not going to grade the syntax stuff for it, like to the to the T. If you forget a, a, a one parameter or something, it's probably not the end of the world. But it's going to be more like if if the problem that I gave you to solve requires shared memory, I want to see that you use shared memory. Make sense? Um, in fact, in that particular case, it probably would even be sufficient for you to just, uh, you know, write a line that says, you know, get global shared memory named this. Just make up a function call that is effectively getting shared memory as long as somewhere else you set the shared memory. So it's more going to be about, do you know when to use shared memory, when to not use shared memory, when shared memory even is required? Like, uh, when do we spawn children and that kind of stuff? Uh, make sense? So uh, mostly uh, programming related, reading code, writing code, uh, and then knowing how to use some of the inner process communication stuff we've dealt with. All right, so now let's look at some of the other things we've uh, discussed uh, so I can tell you where I will most likely put in filler. Uh, let's see. Uh, certainly something related to POSIX could be fair game. Uh, I could certainly ask a question uh, related to some of the command line stuff we've used as, as well. Um, so, you know, maybe something with uh, uh, man pages or how do header files work, that kind of stuff. Um, universal I.O., pretty important. Um, I could see you having a question that requires you to read something in from the user, um, you know, using scanf, um, writing something, you know, manipulating it, writing it back out, something like that. So you might want to put examples of universal I.O. on your cheat sheet as well. Um, you know, again, those questions are going to be less about, did you know how to copy the... Uh, um, you know, the, the, the input uh, uh, code and more about kind of the nature of file descriptors and passing around integers for file descriptors and that kind of stuff. I care more about that than the perfect function call that, you know, if you do the wrong kind of uh, memory allocation, it, you get the segmentation fault or something like that. It's, it's, I'm not going to be looking at that. Um, you should be able to allocate memory for a variable. So the malloc uh, stuff, if I say uh, um, create a um, string capable or create a variable capable of holding a string up to uh, 50 characters, you should be able to uh, malloc that char pointer to do that. Uh, more uh, command line stuff. I think on the midterm we had the standard in, standard out, standard error. So uh, along the lines of using the console, using the command line, redirecting standard input, standard error. Uh, remember the, the, the greater than sign uh, or the two greater than sign for redirecting something. So if I um, come out to the terminal here as an example. Um, so like here's who.java, something like that. If I uh, redirect standard output, 
um, to uh, a file, who.java.copy, let's say, that's going to put that in there. If I only wanted to get the error portion, um, let's call this guy dot error, I would redirect, redirect the second output stream, which is standard error. Um, but Does something and two does something yeah, two uh, appends, gotcha. one overwrites. Yep. So notice that I just tried to redirect standard error to this file, and nothing. This file, I promise you, will be empty because there was no standard error associated with this. So notice that this still went out to the screen because it didn't have uh, error associated with it. Okay. Let's see. So some command line stuff. Um, certainly our process creation stuff, be able to use uh, uh, fork, be able to uh, differentiate, differentiate between the parent and the child, be able to do some of our communication stuff between the parent and the child, um, be able to answer questions about what would be the right type of inter, inter process communication. So there could be a non-programming question that gives you some scenario and asks you to say, assuming we need this, you know, this scenario to work, um, how, what kind of inter process communication might you use and how to get the children to share the right kind of information with each other? That kind of some, that kind of thing. So using some of the options of inter process communication we've discussed. Uh, mem set will not be on the exam. <laughs> <laughs> or will it? <laughs> set mem. Set mem will be. I'll provide that function for you. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, does it have the same parameters? Does, that set? does not. <laughs> <laughs> it flips everything around. There's one extra parameter. Saying it's just called Boolean, not Memset. <laughs> <laughs> True or false? Um, okay, let's see. Uh, well, this is something I don't think we covered on the uh, midterm. So, the static versus shared libraries. What's the advantage of uh, of those guys? This comes down to portability of code. Uh, shared libraries exist at the operating system level where static libraries kind of travel with your, your source code. Pros and cons of each. One, your application is uh, smaller, but more dependent on the operating system. And the other one is your application is larger, but less dependent on the operating system. But when you're dealing with older code like this, it's still uh, um, you know, relatively platform dependent, uh, at least within a POSIX platform, but we'll be, we've even seen there's some discrepancies with that, and we've seen that throughout the semester. So, for instance, the Mac OS is technically a POSIX-compliant uh, operating system at the kernel level. Apple has done their job of breaking some of that, um, but, for instance, there are certain things that POSIX says you can do that won't work on the command line of a Mac just because of how Apple kind of locks it down. Uh, some of the things that uh, we can do on Cloud9... Um, we can't do in the Mac, and some of the things we can do in Cloud9, we might not be able to do on SUSE, or maybe SUSE, we can't do it on Cloud9. I think Cloud9 uses, uh, um, uh, what Linux do they use? Uh, the, the one that they're putting on uh, all the stupid machines. Ubuntu. Ubuntu, yeah, they're using Ubuntu Linux. I'm almost positive Cloud9 is. I know, um, what was the guy before Cloud9 that we were using last semester? Are we using something else? Nitro, Nitrous, Nitrous, and Nitrous definitely uses Ubuntu. I think Cloud9 does as well. Oh, well, weren't we using it for some other class? Yeah, that was no, it might not have been last semester, it might have been something. Oh, well, whatever, we used it at some point. It all kind of mixes together when you're, you just become numb and you have to deal with these same people for so long. Um, let's see, uh, concept of synchronization versus inter-process communication. Um, so, you know, how do we, 
um, maintain uh, access to, you know, or how do we control access to a particular resource versus communicating between uh, parent and child. So that's the idea of synchronization is the controlling <coughs> access. So that would be things like semaphores would be a, a form of synchronization. <laughs> then we have some special purpose synchronization that we didn't necessarily talk about in here, but we can lock down individual functions and put them in uh, like uh, admin space, root space, uh, so that there can only be called by, you know, when you're, when the operating system is in a certain mode, uh, that type of stuff. Um, uh, so uh, pipes certainly are fair game. So kind of uh, communicating between parent and child directly using uh, universal I.O. on a single machine. So that's when pipes would be used. Sockets also uh, more than fair game. So I would expect to have... Uh, uh, both of those um, involved in questions on the exam. So sockets and pipes, kind of the same thing. Both use universal I.O. One of them is communicating over the Internet. The other one's communicating on the same machine. But these are direct communication measures, right? We're sending uh, non-standard messages between point A and point B over some communication channel. Um, also, pipes are maintained uh, by the operating system, um, where a socket is not. A socket is local to your particular, we get a file descriptor that's local, right? Where the operating system maintains our, our, our pipes. So we request a particular pipe from the operating system. That's how the two processes both kind of get involved in the, the thing. Uh, I, do, I felt like my hand gestures were funny there. As I said, <laughs> I got the smirk. And, um, all right, so uh, we never really got into We talked about file locking. We never actually did something with file locking. Um, that would have been handy in our uh, epic merge sort, right? Um, if we can rely on synchronizing a single file. So another synchronization technique would have been file locking. Uh, where instead of protecting a single variable, we use a file, but we only allow one uh, process to access that file at a time. So we effectively use this file as a shared resource, effectively shared memory, um, and with the knowledge that only we're protecting it through file locks. Uh, let's see. We never talked about message queues, but effectively it's like a, a mailbox. Um, so that won't be on the exam, but if you're just adding it to your, your knowledge base, we, we did discuss it. We never actually looked at the examples of it. Um, but uh, this would be somewhere between kind of a pipe sock, well, probably on, within a single machine inter process communication, would be somewhere between a pipe and a signal. So it's kind of like, well, we're not going to, I'm not going to send you something directly. Instead, I'm going to leave you a little note. Um, but that note is going to allow me to say whatever I want to say on there. So whenever you want to check your, your, your mail, then you can check it and see if any of the other processes have left you a note. That's message cues. Uh, as opposed to signals, it's, if somebody's listening, it's a real-time event. And pipes also, real-time events. Uh, semaphores, examples of synchronization. Uh, shared memory, examples of inter-process communication. So make sure you kind of have those two worlds of um, uh, systems programming separated. What's an example of inter-process communication? What's an example of synchronization? And then be prepared to write um, some code specifically using things that we dealt with a lot in here. Pipes, um, sockets, and uh, shared memory. Uh, semaphores would be fair game. I probably wouldn't do anything with signals. Um, but pipes, sockets, semaphores, uh, I would say most of the um, systems programming esque programming questions will involve those three things. So we won't have to worry about doing signaling. I'm trying to decide if I want to promise that. I, I think I can promise that. I think I can promise that. I think all the questions I'm planning on asking will involve either pipes, sockets, or semaphores. Uh, and shared memory. Definitely shared memory. So if you can kind of get those four, you know, IPC and synchronization tools down, I think uh, that should allow you to competently answer all those, all those questions. Okay.
Uh, we talked about threads at the high level, but because I'm, this exam is going to be mostly programming, we never did threads in, uh, um, I mean, we, we technically participated in threads through pthreads, but we never wrote our own threads. We've just done everything with full, full bore processes through the fork command. Um, nothing on that. Um, nothing on that. Well, if I got desperate for like an extra question, uh, you know, I could ask something about why is real time very different than process time or something like that. You know, the time a process actually spends on the CPU versus a human being's perception of, of time that would deal more with like scheduling and stuff like that. And um, I would have to get really, really desperate, but I'll say it's fair game. Uh, you're absolutely right. There will definitely be a conversion question on there. Good call. Good call. Huh? No hello world. Not on this one. Um, you know what would actually be fun? What? That is true. Yeah. You said there would be bit yeah. wise, and there wasn't anything about it. Okay. You got it in bold all on your slides, and you said this will be on the test. All right, so I need to have bit wise. Okay, here. So let me. I don't know. You did this last time, and it didn't didn't work. No, it's going to be a single question. question. Final exam fun. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Bitwise, we'll do that. There'll be a conversion question other than the bitwise. Um, uh, then, man, I just came up with a really, uh, I gotta remind myself like that. Um, evil function uh, idea. Remember. Oh well. No, I'm not gonna tell you because this thing is. Nobody's gonna answer this correctly. Uh, it is. What's up? Merge sort and assembly. <laughs> Go. One is not multi-threaded. It's okay. Um, okay, so. No, no, it's still not okay. <laughs> Let's see. Put it there. Um. No, it's merge sort multi-process. Uh, all right, so shut up. So concept of system calls. So that layer of the operating system that lives between our, uh, um, our our user applications and the kernel itself. How we have these entry points, and we've used several different system calls. Most of them deal with our inner process communication stuff. But that concept of uh, how system calls actually hook into the operating system and do the magic stuff for us. Um, so when we make the fork system call, you know, we recognize that some legitimate things are happening at the operating system level that we don't have to worry about other than who are we now? We're in an identity crisis afterwards. And this is more of an overarching thing within C that hopefully we've seen because it's a, uh, a non-object oriented language. We don't get to, uh, um, I guess we don't get to participate in this, uh, um, we're constantly passing addresses and pointers around, relying on things changing stuff in memory, and then us going back and, and recognizing the changes, rather than us having objects that can work with stuff. And system calls, as well as our other libraries, like our string library and stuff like that, all work the same way. Um, let's see. I don't ask anything about that. Um, header, oh, here, bitwise, ask this. There it is. Okay, but I, oh, I put this in the final slide, so we're we should be good. Um, there's merge sort. Should I? 
Can I put a merge sort on the exam? No. What a, maybe maybe write just the merge. That could be like an example of a um, uh, one of the normal C programming problems might be kind of like do the merge step uh, for a merge sort, something like that, where you take in a um, an integer array uh, with a uh, begin begin one end one begin two end two and effectively merge the the two together into a single integer array, copying the results back into the original, kind of memory manipulation and that kind of stuff. That could, that could be the type of question I would ask. So create new memory to fill it up, do some logic, and copy the stuff back, just the merge step. Um, and then, of course, the rest of merge sort, single and multi-threaded <laughs> with the file locking. <laughs> um, that. Yeah, so certainly a conversion question. Um, oh, and, and I think, because we're most of us are seniors or right, right on that cusp, um, I think uh, you're going to want to really uh, uh, look at your conversion answer closely because I think I'm going to grade it uh, digitally. So zero or one, right or wrong. So if you're even off by one digit, I think you're at zero for that question. You guys should be able to convert. This you guys should be able to convert these things error free by now because you could check your result, right? After you. That's what I thought I did last time. I got it wrong. Yeah, so don't suck. It'll just be a zero on that question. That's hard for some of us. But once you have your answer, you can go back and see does this answer translate into the original? Do more work after the work I just did. Well, if you did it wrong. Well, do you want to get it right? <laughs> you want the yeah. points? Yeah. So I think. Uh, yeah, I think for bitwise and the other conversion, it should be perfectly done since there's no excuse for not checking your work. Um, uh, let's see. Certainly the idea of blocking versus non-blocking communication, um, you know, how that translates where we can, um, you know, how, how do we... Uh, um, so far in what we know with C, how do we accomplish asynchronous communication? If we want, if we want something to happen asynchronously, what do we do? Fork. We fork. Give ourselves a second process that can go and do things seemingly at the same time. That's our version of asynchronous communication as far as we know. Um, we've uh, seen some blocking communication. So reading from sockets, well, reading from anything. So it's universal I.O. If we're reading in from the user, that blocks until the user types the crap in. Right. Um, uh, there will probably be a question with scanf. So, for instance, uh, uh, we looked in here about splitting the incoming string up. So I might say, uh, you know, read in your uh, first name, last name, and age into uh, um, uh, you know into three variables, and I don't you know, print them to the screen backwards or, or something like that. Whatever, um, but. Uh, oh, actually, that was another evil question. I like that one. Okay, so let's say I ask you to read in your first name, your last name, and your age. Wow, that's totally difficult. Oh, no, I, I, wanna, I don't want to. I don't want to give us. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. Come on. Then, then, where's my? Then you can give the other evil one. Where's my final exam slide? It was in the middle of your slides. Yeah. Really? <laughs> I thought I put it. So they totally would have gotten overlooked. It would have. Where did I put that? <laughs> right there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Didn't you say it was the last one? I, that's why I intended. Evil first name. Last name, first last name, age question. There's that one. Um, oh my gosh! Now I already forgot it. Hold on. <laughs> as soon as it comes back to me, I'll come in and give myself a bigger, a better hint. Oh, oh, oh! Here I got. Now I remember. Conversion stuff. Did we do that on Nightmare. Yeah, we did that in the scheme. 
version stuff nightmare. All right, so that should be good. And nobody will get those right. Okay. It's always easier to grade exams where a majority of the questions are left blank. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Just make them all multiple choice, and yeah. it's way easier. Select the correct function. Exactly. <laughs> 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 it's harder to write then. No. <laughs> Probably what Ryan Guy, I think Ryan Guy, had one of his uh, um, uh, exams over in Korea right now, he it was a multiple choice test, and all the answers were in Korean. <laughs> 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 It's like an English, it's an English, uh, uh, it's like the teachers are going out of their way to be jerks. Like, the class is in English. Just to textbook, that. I don't know. <laughs> the, the textbook's in English, the t but this class had to be offered, like, after the fact. Like, they, they screwed up and the class wasn't actually supposed to be offered in English. I don't know what the deal is. Apparently, all of the questions, it was a multiple choice thing, all the questions were in English. But the answer options were all in Korean. <laughs> <laughs> so I might, it might as well have been in, I might as well have been wearing a blindfold and the answer would be in emojis or something. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I mean, chances are it probably didn't affect his grade. All right. Let's see. All right, so this is back to that nature of C function calls, um, you know, where very commonly you're p calling a function, and the functions don't re don't necessarily return a result. Instead, the functions take as a parameter the hold the the the, the resting place, the final uh, uh, variable place in memory for holding the answer, and then you need to then go and check that place in memory once it's done. So be able to read a, a documentation and, and understand that. Um, and so certainly all of the string functions that we uh, messed with in here would also be fair game. Did you just have a man page of questions that tell us how to use these functions? Well, I mean, I can. I mean, I, I, it would certainly be fair game for me to show you a function, whether it exists or not, um, and give you the, you know, what the name of the function, yeah, it's return type if, if I want to have one, the parameters it takes, and then effectively, you know, in man page, page format, you know, what, what each parameter is supposed to be, and then ask you to call it accurately. Something like that. What are you talking about? We have Google for that. <laughs> <laughs> Not on the exam. You're going to put the entire Google in your cheat sheet? No, just echo. We just draw the search bar in. <laughs> all you draw in, is, all you draw in is the "I'm feeling lucky." But does that still exist? Yeah. Does any actually? Does anybody actually go to Google.com to search? They still. I just typed it in on their own. Yeah, I, I don't even remember the last time. I don't even remember the last time I've been to Google.com. And I search with Google all the time. You put it in the URL, right? It just. Like my mom, you Google Google in the address bar, and then go to Google.com, and then search for what you want. Yeah, I think that's the correct procedure. That's the correct, correct. <laughs> I thought it was Google in Microsoft to say Bing no, Google. Um, okay, again, definitely definitely understand what uh, semaphores are for. Netflix and chill. Netflix, yeah. <laughs> Be able to come up with the answer to this quiz. Um, let's see. Anything else that will be on there? All right, so. This is definitely. Huh? Well, I said these are fair game. I'm not gonna tell you what each question is. I told. Hold on. I told. I told you two twenty percent of the exam. You now know. You know that there will be a bitwise question for ten percent of the exam that you must get either perfectly right or it's completely wrong. There will be a conversion question that you must either get perfectly correct or it's completely wrong. That's twenty percent of the exam. But we also so automatically get 20% wrong because of two evil functions. So isn't that a wash? Yeah. yeah, but it's still, that's fine. Let's assume that's a wash. But this is still, if we assume these are not answerable questions, what I have highlighted there. 
Okay, if we just make that as a blind assumption, you know what 40% of the exam is going to look like. <laughs> so you really only need to concern yourself with 60% is going to be covered in tears. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the other 60% of the exam is going to come in the form of an in-class presentation. <laughs> that, that actually sounds better. No, uh, specifically by Evan. Well, we'll do the Christian worldview thing. You could either take the other 60% of the exam or come up to the front of the class and spend an hour and a half reading from the Bible out loud. <laughs> and we're going to record that. <laughs> well, each person who decides to do that version of the exam will be assigned a book of the Bible. Do you have to listen to everyone else do theirs, or do you just have to do yours? So everyone shows up there. You have to read the entire book. Yeah, can we pick the book? No, no, I'll assign the book. Can we pick the book? And you have to read it in the Greek. I can read it in Greek. Wouldn't that be creepy? Like they're giving some tour down the hall or something like that. You just have like twelve students up front. In the beginning. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got one. You got one person's like halfway through Genesis talking, you know, doing Noah's Ark. You got somebody else who's in Revelation. <laughs> the more people who do that, I think the worse everybody else would do because they have to listen to that many people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Seriously, I mean, we almost have enough people here to. I mean, don't we? We can pretty much do the whole New Testament. Well, you can pretty close. I mean, some of the books are relatively short, so we can, if you got to go an hour and a half, you can go back to back. <laughs> I'll read a book from the Bible out loud for an hour and a half. Wait, for an hour and a half or until you're done? For an hour and a half. Oh, so it doesn't even matter. If you finish, you start over. Oh, you know what would be a good extra credit question? You do those? I've done it in the past, so this is actually a good one and a legitimate Christian worldview one. The last one we had was, what would you promise your dream? No, no, well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was just a real question. Where is Amish? Yeah, where, where's Clark? He's in the fields. Which is nice out there. <laughs> well, I went fishing with Large in this morning, so I know he exists today. Oh, he definitely told me he was bringing me 16 gigabytes of RAM. So his what? His nap went too long, so I'll tuck her down. <laughs> Did he actually use the word tuckered? No, I didn't. Because oh. <laughs> that's problematic. Mm. What's this extra credit? Wait, are you recording this? I am. Yeah. Well, no, it's not. Yeah, I mean, it, this would actually be a pretty. It would be a pretty good Concordia extra credit question, but maybe a fairly difficult question. No, no. I was going to say uh, uh, list the books of the Bible in order. There's actually a really cool app on. Uh, there's a, there's no. Well, I, I, there's an app that I use. It's it's a really kind of good study thing, uh, where you can you can you. Okay, everybody on the cheat sheet just needs yeah. to write down all sixty-seven books of the Bible. <laughs> 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 takes a, takes up like major major no, use no, of your cheat sheet. Yeah, I don't know. That would be a good question, but a long question. Yeah, you you stop looking at it. <laughs> if you count them, you or you can count them as multiple choice. Just to make you <laughs> just count 67. Yeah. Well, no, that would be another thing. If you had the room for it, you could just list like have all the books of the Bible, jumble them, and have you mark which ones are Old Testament, which ones are New Testament. That's easier than ordering them all. Well, that's definitely easier than ordering them all. Yeah. So All right, so I think that's I think that's it. That probably won't be the extra credit question, so I wouldn't waste your time. I mean, I, well, you're not wasting your time memorizing them and knowing what's Old Testament, New Testament, but it's probably not going to be directly applicable to the 450 exam. <laughs> this is 
But I might put an extra credit question on there. But if I do, it'll be like a legitimate one and probably a difficult one. Legitimate Christian worldview one or just a legitimate extra credit question? Well, either one's fair. Yeah. All right. Questions, comments, concerns, bribes. All right. I'll see everybody on Friday.